Hey folks, welcome to another video. This one will be a bit different. I, I'm thinking about set up just doing the usual uh, take a look at the technology videos, also doing some more opinion analysis, uh, tips, rants, uh, stuff like that. And this will be the first of the of those. It wasn't supposed to be this the first one, but it's a very hot topic right now. So I, I thought I would start with this one. And it's regarding a new feature coming with the ASP.NET Core 6, which are called, it's a feature set called the minimal APIs. And basically what this means is uh, now we can build simple APIs and scale from there. And when we go to the terminal and type .NET new web, this is what we get. A program CS with this and the usual CS proj and stuff like that. So no longer there is the startup class. It was already not needed, but it was in the template. And now the template is just this, 11 lines or 12, I don't remember. Maybe I deleted the a line, but it's just this. And folks are a bit, uh, I don't know, not happy. Uh, and I don't get why, but mostly what I'm seeing folks saying is that this new minimal APIs are just for demos and doesn't make sense for production application and stuff like that. And that's why I'm doing this video because, well, I don't agree with that. Uh, but I wanted to see the point of view. So, if there, if the the reason for this dislike is that we don't like to put everything in a single file, then I don't really get it because we can split its code. We can split and put things in the files as we we want. And yeah, the demos that the ASP.NET Core team have been doing have been in a single file and for example have this one open so it's uh, from david fowler the dotnet asp.net core architect and it built an api just a to-do api all within a single file so but it's a single file with 100 one with under 100 lines so i would say yeah if your application is this small why wouldn't you put everything in the same in the same file so but yeah of course, for the demos, they are showing this like like this to show that it's really it can be really simple to build an API, and they can in this show all the features. So it's using Swagger, it's using uh, Entity Framework, it's using the usual uh, services uh, like dependency injection. So if you see here in this map get, we say the route, and then we can just put a lambda and say okay to do db context. And it gets injected automatically. In this case, again, to do db context, injected it automatically, and the ID which comes from the route. And then the post, again, db injected to do from the body, or this put injection route body. So these are the new new APIs, and this is the thing that interests me. This way of doing things. Now it's not for everyone, of course. Many will prefer the controllers they are used to and have used them for years and it works great. So good thing they are not going anywhere. But now we have more options. So in fact, we already had these options to map, put, post, get, all of that. If I'm not mistaken, those are were all already there. Just this model binding and the way these lambdas would work wasn't there yet. So making use of new features from C Sharp 9, 10 and from ASP.NET Core 6. So now we can do it this way. Do we need to? No. But it's a simpler way to get started. And I think that's why the ASP.NET Core is pushing it. So instead of you starting with all the things, you can start simple. And if you need the complexity, then you can introduce it. And if we think about it and looking at other tech stacks, this is the way many others are already working. Uh, they don't have that, that controller concept. I think for Java has in Spring or whatever, they have that. But in others, for example, let's take a look. Uh, this is a very interesting repository, which basically provides a spec for an application with front end and back end, and then can be implemented in multiple technologies. So folks can see how the same application would be implemented in multiple technologies. And over here, we can see like in Node, you, if you look at node, you see you know that it works that way. So routes go to routes, articles, and you can see like router, and we want to get 
to this route and with this function and get post get patch stuff like that route and the function so in node it was already like this similar to what we are seeing now in those minimal apis and as you are seeing it's not all in the same file so it's split articles js commons js so you don't need to do it everything in the same file but for demos of course the team is doing everything in the same file because it's pretty it shows that in a single file with 50 lines they can do a, a, a small api and if you look other technologies like f sharp same thing program then getting the things path here's the, the the route and the function that will handle it stuff like that i could continue like ktor from kotlin same thing I go source api article same thing get this is the route and then this is the implementation of the the route and it's split in multiple files stuff like that so we can see that in fact it's asp.net core that was doing things another way and now it's like uh, getting parity with other other tech stacks now maybe many folks prefer the other way because that's why they prefer .NET, because they like to do things that way instead of this way. So again, that great that it's not going away. But then why, it's, why is this important? Besides being another way to do things and probably simpler for folks getting started or coming from other tech stacks, there are other benefits like performance. So because MVC has much more features, I would love to say what more features does it have but i i'm not really sure that would be something that i would love for the team to provide somewhere like the features that mvc has that the new routing approach doesn't but we we can see that because mvc is heavier and has much more features and stuff that it needs call to call and stuff like that we have better performance with this new routing approach so you can think with this all new cloud native microservices first and stuff like that, that this is really important because of the performance. The, um, so in the cloud, if you can handle more requests in a, in a smaller uh, machine or container or stuff like that, it's, it costs less. So this is one important thing. Performance, if you don't need everything from MVC, and a different way of doing things. Because even if we are working with MVC for years and years, there are folks who prefer other approaches. So in the past, there existed a Nancy FX library. It still exists, but I don't think it's maintained. There exists Carter. So I think, yeah, Carter. And these libraries, alternative libraries, build, in this case, build on top of ASP.NET Core. And with these new features, these libraries improve, and for folks that prefer to use these kinds of libraries instead of old school, old school MVC, it's great because they are getting a better experience. We can't just think about just MVC. There are some things that for as much improvements as they put in, sometimes if you want better performance, you need to take things off. And also some people just like to do things in a different way. And this allows it. And for example, I have this here. This is a recent project by Khalid from the JetBrains team. I called it Branchy. And it's just, if you noticed over here, it always gets the complete route. And with this uh, project, he created something like MapGet and then Path. And, this, and it's an hierarchical way to do these things so yeah there are different approaches that uh, some folks prefer the old way or old or still relevant of course other folks prefer alternative ways and that's why there are many libraries and stuff like that and there are benefits pros and cons of everything uh, i have this tweet here because i think it's important minimal apis are not just you don't need to Okay, if I start with minimal APIs, I can't do anything else. No, it's easier to 
it's easy to move from any log APIs. You can do it in the same project. You can even have both in the same. So maybe you have some things that are very, very simple and you just implement it like this, but you have something very complex, which needs a bunch of features like complex model binding, validation, stuff like that. Okay, then you put that part in the controller and it works all together. You don't need to, to split, you don't need different services. It all works together. If you want some consistency, then start with what you think, or maybe start with minimal APIs if you think they will be enough. If they aren't, yeah, just copy paste the code into a controller and get the, the features. It's not as complex. So, but, but don't think as if everything will be in one file. One file is for demos or very small APIs. The API is bigger. Okay, split it. Responsibilities, introduce abstractions, all those kinds of stuff that we usually do. Avoid over-engineering as much as possible, of course, but do everything. But everything works well together, and I don't think there's a, a great reason to be complaining about this. It's just another option, another way to do stuff. And it's simpler for some folks, Others are used to what we have, so continue with it. And just to try to provide some motivation for this, if you don't know this page, themes of .NET, where the DSP.NET and .NET teams put the information about the things they are, they are betting on. And there's this one, .NET is recognized as a compelling framework for building cloud native apps. And if we go here, we can see you have a bunch of things. And I think this, mostly comes from providing an API experience that scales down well and is easier to learn. And yeah, I think particularly for folks with other tech stacks as a, with the experience in other tech stacks, this is great because as we saw, it maps better for, for those stacks. And it's simpler, has better performance. So if you just need something cloud native to implement some uh, Azure functions or lambdas or small, Containers seems like a good way. If you think the, it will be more complex, then let's go to MVC. It's still there. Just add controllers, create a controller. Let's go. So I'll put all the, those links in the, in the video description. So let me know what you think. And yeah, let me know in general what you think. Do you think minimal APIs are worthless just for demos? Are interesting but maybe you won't use it let me know or maybe you love it and we'll use them so let me know what you think about these minimal apis what you think about these more opinion slash uh analysis slash rants videos if it's useful but yeah particularly let me know what you think about these minimal apis and stuff like that because i really want to kind of understand why some folks are very passionate against because the folks that were passionate for, I already knew before this was even a feature, but now some folks complaining and it's kind of strange to me. So if you are against and or if you are for, please leave a comment. And yeah, hopefully this was interesting and that's about it. See, yes.